when the original Khaleesi virus and myxomatosis came through, there's been an, almost a permanent 80% reduction in cat densities across the, uh, at least the arid portions of Southern Australia. Our research was uh, wanted to specifically look at how do cats respond when that prey source is taken away from them. We did that out here in arid recovery. Uh, we have a major landscape scar paddock, about 37 square kilometres, where we um, radio collared uh, as many feral cats as we could. Some of them put our GPS collars on them, some of them we had video collars on that we could actually record their hunting. From the GPS and the video collar footage, rabbits were a huge part of these cats' lives. They would go from often burrow to burrow to burrow. They were the main thing they were hunting. When there were rabbits everywhere, cats had absolutely no need whatsoever to touch any like old food they found lying around. But we also were testing their hunger through time by putting out little sausages next to um, remote cameras to see what their likely uptake was. When there were rabbits everywhere, not a single sausage was touched. And that was after about almost 50 cats have walked past sausages and just cared nothing about them. After the rabbits were removed, a lot more cats started eating those sausages on cameras. One of the focal species out here is the plains mouse. They are uh, one of the larger native mice. They're about um, 40 grams. And as such, they're actually a very you know, favored food source of cats. The main way we're, um, we're monitoring their numbers and activity is through both a combination of track counts where we um, brush the sand dunes and look at their specific tracks. But also we're doing um, some trapping, targeted um, Elliot trapping, and also some spotlight surveys. For the rabbit densities, we're, we're measuring rabbit densities mostly through spotlighting. This research was important because cats eat a lot of rabbits and we know that in the long term if you reduce the rabbit populations you also reduce the cat populations and that that benefits native wildlife. But what we didn't know is that if you suddenly reduce rabbit populations there is a risk that at that point in time cats prey switch. So they may, because there's no rabbits available, they may start eating a lot of native animals and the research was trying to quantify that risk. Uh, the research produced two important findings. One was that if you bring down rabbit numbers suddenly, um, cats do prey switch a bit, but it's not so much that it impacts on local populations of native mammals. So that was the first important result. The second important result was that we found that when you bring the rabbit populations down, cats get hungry and at that point in time they're much more likely to take poison baits. So the research also identified a period of time when cats would be very, very vulnerable to that method of control. So the research um, has identified two ways um, that we can use to improve conservation management. The first is that it tells us when we can target poison baiting for cats so that it is most effective at knocking down cat numbers. The second way the research improves conservation management is that it's telling us that although prey switching occurs, it's quite likely that it's not a big problem. So it's more important to get the rabbit numbers down than to worry about what happens at the point when the rabbit numbers decrease. So the native species that this research will benefit is basically anything that a cat preys upon. Um, and so that's anything in the range of sizes from about 30 grams up to sort of two, three, four kilos.